going on here, even though we're going through the same issues, is not with the same effect. I always say, and I'm sure someone said someone smarter than me has said it before, that you know, patriarchy would die, and so would misogyny if women didn't support it. South Korea is a small country, largely homogeneous. So they have nothing to fall back on as far as gender, because everyone's Korean. Whereas in the United States, we have a melting pot. There's not just gender. We support lots of genders. We support trans people. We support, we have a whole melting pot of issues and other things to which we can delve into and have a nice distraction in without being gender. We don't even actually truly understand or even acknowledge gender as a solid thing or as a fluid thing. We just don't do that. So the 4B movement, because I started to ask this question when the subject of dissenter men came into play. And I kept asking myself, okay, we're dissentering men. You know, those of us who are not in a relationship or married, um, dissentering men, that is the message. You're, there are incels in the world, which shows that obviously women are dissentering men. How is this changing men? I understand why in the 4B movement, things are changing because uh, these women seek to tear down the, the infrastructure of patriarchy. But here in the United States, the very protections that South Korean women are fighting for, we already have. We are protected under the law uh, when we're pregnant. We can't just, you know, terminate our jobs. Now, we have to fight for maternity leave, but at least we do get it. No one, to my knowledge, is forcing pregnant women to quit their jobs. If there is discrimination and we can prove discrimination, it's not a good thing for the people who discriminated against us. Largely, our issues and women's issues are personal issues. Whether or not to engage with men who are dangerous to us. Whether or not to engage with men who have not done the work or who are not emotionally stable. Those are personal issues. Personal misogynies. They're not external, so to speak. They are, but they're not. It's not the same is what I'm saying. Also, as I was saying before, the 4B movement in South Korea understand that this is a long, hard road. They are planned. They have a 20-year plan to hunker down and be this way for 20 years. They're not buying makeup. They're not buying clothes. They're not making themselves in any way appealing to men. They're saving their money if possible, and it is possible. They're living with their parents. They're not even, they're, they don't even have their own place. They're living with their parents. So, although the movement sounds really, really good on paper, the end game for the West and the East are not the same. We have freedom here. We just have to use the freedom that we have to make better decisions. I know, I know y'all hate that one. Choose better. It's not about choosing better, but it we... we we have decisions and we have rights that they don't have. And so the end game for them is, like I said, to tear down the infrastructure of patriarchy. 
what are we trying to change here? We can go to work. We can get an education. We can, we can, you know, de-glamour ourselves or, or glow up. We can, we have more autonomy. In South Korea, a woman can't operate without her father or her husband. Yes, in 2024, that is how they are living. So I have to ask the question, because, and let me make this one last point too. They're not trying to change men. They're not trying to change men. Again, sustainable for 20 years. They're looking 20 years out. And as, as much as I see so many people talk about the 4B movement, are y'all just embracing the trend? Or are you really thinking about the implications of sustaining yourself in the 4B lifestyle? Because you have to embrace 4B. Yes, it's getting dangerous out there. Yes, men are angry because they see their power diminishing. Whatever power they thought they had, they see that diminishing. But we have options that they don't have. What is our end game? What is our end game in the West? How are we changing men? I mean, is this to punish men? How does this change them? How do you make an incel who's already upset, who already doesn't have his choice in women, who already, well, I personally believe that he just wants to, he can't get the woman he wants, so he's just going to throw his little tantrum. But how do we turn the minds of an incel who are already feeling powerless by retracting ourselves even more, making them feel what? There are men who will not change no matter what. They will die on their hill. No, they won't change. So I'm trying to understand, and this is the question, how does that affect men? What does that do for us? How is this sustainable for us? I, I'm saying us, like women. I know I'm not even in the market, but I'm, I'm curious. How is this sustainable? Are we all looking into the future? What does the future look like? There are still women who want to be with men. We have a much bigger country than they do. I don't think the 4B movement would work because we don't have that kind of commitment. And then I have the question, like, doesn't it, well, maybe I shouldn't ask that one. Doesn't it, is it, how is it sustainable? Because, like I said, the 4B movement have washed their hands of men altogether. How do we wash our hands of men altogether? We still have to talk to men. We still have to interact with men. There's no place that we can go that men aren't there. Unless we want to really, radically take on control the whole world and separate things men on one side women on the other side unless we really want to do that the 4b movement is a great theory it's a great idea for the west but we're already doing these things we're already we already have things in in line you know Unless we're really, really ready to make that change. How does this change anybody? 
And I'm let me be clear. I'm not telling you to go out here and sleep with people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just asking what's the end game for us in the West if we were to adopt the 4B movement? Because everyone's really passionate about the 4B movement. They love it. They love the, they picked out the interesting little pieces about it. Oh, they don't give a damn about men. That's fantastic. That's what I love about the 4B movement. Yeah. But how many women are you going to support? Are you going to we going to get together and, and take our money and just buy a building so that women can just live in that building unharassed by men? How does that work? The 4B movement, if you're reading the, the article, they have totally cut themselves off. The young lady in this article, let me see if I can bring this up here. She is. Going to an all girls school. And then I have to ask about our needs, wants, and desires, because women are sexual beings too. That mean for us sexually. Now, a lot of women here, some women are lesbians, but not every woman is a lesbian. Not every woman wants to be a lesbian. So I want to share this little article, a little bit of this article with you. I'm not going to stay too long um, about the 4B movement and what it is and what it means, what it truly means. And then, you know, how you feel about it, you put in the comments. But I think it's important to understand what it means to be 4B. So the article starts off with this. This is from The Cut. I'll put it in the, I'll link it in the description. The woman of South Korea's 4B movement aren't finding the patriarchy, leaving it behind. Young Mi's childhood was a difficult one. The 25-year-old nurse was born to a poor family in Daegu, South Korea, known for being one of the most conservative cities in the country. Young Mi's mom left the home when Young Mi was young, uh, was young to escape her father's or her husband's physical abuse, leaving her and her sister behind with him and their paternal grandmother. When she was five, her eight-year-old sister started losing her hair from stress. This is how bad it is over there. Okay? The pressure. The, the, the intensity of it all. I, ugh, I can't even really articulate it as well as I like. As she grew older, young me found herself depressed, unsure of what her future held and financially unstable. That's a sign of trauma. In Korea, the patriarchal society in which women are generally expected to defer to their fathers and to adhere to rigid beauty standards. She felt like a perpetual victim, obsessed by the wrongs done to her by her father and pressured into maintaining the appearance in order to please men. So, but it, she felt like a perpetual victim, obsessed by the wrongs done to her by her father and pressured into maintaining appearance in order to please men. Despite her meager budget as a nursing student, she purchased new clothes each season, spending a lot of money on cheap, poor quality clothes from H&M. Dad, why y'all got to drag H&M like that? She wore makeup religiously. She said, I could not go outside without any makeup. I felt the shame of my face. I had the pressure, I had this pressure of wanting to look beautiful and wanting to be desirable physically uh, and, and or sexually. While scrolling through Twitter in 2018, Young Me came across footage of protests 
taking place in the streets of Seoul. In South Korea, where cases of femicide, revenge corn, and dating violence are widespread, a surge in spy cam X crimes overwhelmingly committed by men have mostly resulted in fines and suspended jail sentences if they were prosecuted or persecuted, prosecuted, excuse me, at all. That was not the case, however, for one 25 year old who had taken an unconsensual photo of a male model at the art school and posted it online. She was sentenced to 10 months in prison and court ordered sexual violence counseling. The demonstrations were a reaction to the blatant hypocrisy. Young Mean was moved by the solidarity she saw. But there was one thing she found perplexing. Many of the women at the protest shaved their heads on camera. As she began, as she began to follow more feminist Twitter accounts, Young Me understood this was a public act of rejection of those same aesthetic expectations imposed on Korean women that have made the country a leader in grooming products and plastic surgery. The leader. The leader. She began to realize that, you know, men do not do that. Men do not feel the pressure to buy clothes every season to or wear makeup. Heavens no, I wish they would feel pressure to, you know, buy some clothes and wear some makeup. Soon, young me shaved her head too and stopped wearing makeup, joining the so-called escape the corset movement happening among young women in South Korea. The movement, which first gained popularity in 2018, saw Korean women publicly turn away from societally imposed beauty standards by cutting their hair short and going barefaced. Are we prepared to do that? Young Me was not alone in 2019. A survey found that 24% of women in their 20s re reported cutting back their spending on beauty products in the previous year, with many saying they no longer felt they needed to put in the effort. This eventually led Young Me to 4B, a smaller but growing movement among Korean women. 4B is shorthand for, and I'm not going to try to pronounce all those words, but I'm going to, it's going to, it's um, hetero, no heterosexual marriage, no childbirth, no dating and no heterosexual, no sex. It is both an ideological stance and a lifestyle. And this is what I mean. You know, for the West, are we prepared to live this kind of lifestyle? And many women I spoke to extend their boycott to nearly all the men in their lives, including distancing themselves from male friends. Through open chat groups and Kakao Talk, Young Me connected with other feminists in Daegu, where she lived with her mother while attending nursing school, soon meeting each other offline. It's so easy to recognize each other with short hair, she said. She stopped seeing her friends from high school and middle school whose conversations still revolved around makeup, clothes, and boys. When we met last November in the cafe in Seoul, and this is the author talking, where she's been living for the last two years, she was barefaced and dressed comfortably in loose jeans and white fleece jacket. Her hair was long enough to be pulled in a ponytail. As she'd grown tired of people asking her about her short hair at her nursing job, but it was tucked uh, into a white baseball cap. Feminism, she said, had held, uh, helped her recognize that it was particularly, excuse me, it was patriarchy that was the problem. Oh, my God. Not her. And that bad things that happen to, in your life are not your fault, she said. And you know that the pressure was difficult. The hierarchy of patriarchy, or the what is what did I just call it? The the infrastructure of patriarchy. When an eight year old has to pull out her hair because of the stress, young for young young me 
and many others who subscribe to basic premises for B um, or practicing B home is the only path by which a Korean woman today can live autonomously. See, we don't have that problem here in the States. And this is why I don't feel that uh, 4B would work here because women here already live autonomously. We already make our own money. We already make our own, well, pay our own bills. In their view, Korean men are essentially beyond redemption and Korean culture on the whole is hopelessly patriarchal, often downright misogynistic. A 2016 uh, survey by the Minister of Gender Equality and Family found the incidence of intimate partner violence at 41.5%, significantly higher than the global average of four, oh, excuse me, 30%. While 4B's adherents may hope to change society through demonstrations and online activism and by modeling an alternative lifestyle to other women, they are not trying to change men whom they view as their oppressors. I don't understand how that's going to change things. I, I, let me back that up a minute. Let me. The, the difference is clear, right? They're not trying to change men. This is not about men. Like feminism isn't really, it's not about men. Men made it about themselves, but it's not about men. It's about the woman. The 4B movement. They're, they're washing their hands of men, and they are adopting a different lifestyle, D totally different, completely washing their hands of men. They're not even talking to their friends or family members who are what we call here in the West male identified. It goes on to read, practicing be home, the four Bs, means you are eliminating the risks that come from heterosexual marriage or dating. Those risks you on alluded to might seem familiar, training career for child rearing and housework, as well as the threat of physical violence. But in Korea, you on said, marriage presents an existential threat. Now, while marriage is difficult here in the States, it's not an existential threat. I don't believe. Is it difficult? Hell yeah, it is. Yeah. Should you get married to emotionally immature men? No. Should you have babies in, a, in this environment where it's not safe? No, I don't believe so. As a, as a mother myself, I, don't, I wouldn't advise a young woman to have babies in this environment. There is a time when Minji, a 4B adherent in Drago, had wanted to get married because, you know, everyone wants to get married. Knowing what she knows now, however, like that domestic violence, as she puts it, is so common, I don't want to get married anymore. Minji is a heterosexual. She has liked a few guys in the past, but they wanted her to treat them like a king. You hear that? So she has no problem boycotting the men of her generation who are a little better than selfish and abusive father. It goes on to read. And I just really want to explain you know, give you a good understanding of what it is or share that with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Follow.
following years of financial crisis in which young people face growing housing costs and intense competition for university spots and jobs, the way women and men related to each other openly soured. Beginning in 2013, the rate of college enrollment among Korean women surpassed those of men. Today, nearly three-fourths of women are enrolled in higher education compared with less than two-thirds of men. Previously, women were expected to drop out of the labor force after marriage or parenthood. Now, young men see their female peers as competitors for increasingly scarce jobs. This is where we share. Right? This is where the West and the East are similar. All these rich countries are going through the same thing. Women are getting their education. Women are competitors. The men see whatever little power they have dwindling. Several academics I spoke with noted to me that Korea is largely ethnically and racially homogeneous, oh my God, homogeneous, <laughs> making gender the default and central fault line. In online forums and on social media, disgruntled men began labeling college-educated women as kimchi women, giving them a stereotype of Korean women as selfish, vain, and obsessed with themselves while exploiting their partners. Now, let me get to the part of this article where they talk about in 2016, because they've been going through this for a minute. We're just coming around to it. In 2016, a young woman murdered a, excuse me, a young man. I'm going to, have to do this over. A young man murdered a young woman in Seoul public bathroom, telling police after he unalived her uh, because the reason he unalived her was because uh, women always ignored him. Despite perpetrators' own statement, police refused to label the unaliving as a hate crime. Furious women flocked to the online feminist message boards, communi uh, communities, and chat forums. This wave of digital feminism attracted women from all backgrounds, including working class women like Minji and Yungmi, making a different, making it different from a traditional Korean feminism, which was largely confined to university NGOs that often received government support in other elite spaces. So I read this paragraph to illustrate to you that feminism in South Korea wasn't widespread. It was largely for the elites. The 4B movement is going against the system. Let's talk about this because this is the most important part. In December of that year, as Korea's, uh, Korea's fertility rate hovered at 1.2 births per woman, it has since slid to 0.78, the lowest in the world. The Korean government launched an online national birth map that showed the number of women of reproductive age in which municipality uh, in each... Oh, I can't even read this mess because it's so ridiculous and disgusting. It, you know what it puts me in mind of? It puts me in mind of that show, The Handmaid's Tale. You know how things are happening in the peripheral and we're kind of seeing it, but we're not really paying as much attention to it as we ought to. And this happened in 2016, right? He puts out the president of the company, the, the, the municipality, the government, Korean government launched an online online national birth map that showed the number of women of reproductive age in each municipality illustrating just what it is what it expected of its female citizens 
We don't have that. Let somebody put something out that uh, something like that out on us. South Korean President Yoon Suk Yul won election in March of 2022 with a message that blamed feminism for Korea's low birth rate and a promise to abolish, excuse me, the country's Ministry of Gender Equality and Family. <coughs> Women were outraged by the map. Observing that the government appeared to consider them livestock. You see why the 4B movement is their movement? You see why it had to be a lifestyle? Because in order to break these iron chains, you have to contort yourself. You have to sacrifice yourself. And most women in the West ain't willing to sacrifice themselves for, for, the, for the end game. Mostly because we have some of the end game. Not all. There's still work to be done. But some. I want to read this paragraph here. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get to the most important parts of it. It says, women who commit to 4B, <clears throat> excuse me, just work hard because they know they will not have a breadwinner man or husband. I'm waiting for my man to come. I'm my man. My man. Thank you to my man. And Zhang, the scholar who wrote her doctoral thesis on troll feminism, adding that some take two or three jobs. Young me and her girlfriend live together among about an hour from the subway. Okay. I'll skip over this because I want to show you several four B four B women I met in Seoul live still live with their parents. My partner lives by herself, but still eats at her parents' house. And she says right here, this is where I really want to start because the other stuff is the economy is very important issue for us. Other 4B groups host events with personal finance experts. Help women learn how to save and invest. A subgroup of an online community called WITH, which stands for Women in the Hell, Hell being a nickname for Korea, is specifically focused on economics. Economics Members post job listings, advice on which banks are offering the best interest rates, and other financial tips. Han, a math tutor who runs her own tutoring company in Duego, said she believes as a woman's collective economic uh, collective economic power grows, so will their political power. Something she sees playing out now, why'd you do that? Playing out. Here it is. Something she sees playing out for the next 20 years. Their interest in finance is both about pressing matter of living an economically viable life and the longer term possibility of women practicing for it be at scale. At scale, this is a lifestyle. Will eventually weaken the patriarchy. 
When women are more economically influential, then it's possible that the political parties will listen to women as important voters. But until then, I feel like women will still be utilized. Their bodies will be utilized to reproduce. So you see why that movement wouldn't work here? And I want to share one more sentence with you. Because there's some complicated questions that need to be answered. Because we don't have rage. It says for a movement. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, I want to go back a little bit. All right. Uh, there it is. But it's not just political backlash and straightened economic circumstances that pose a threat to the long-term sustainability of a 4B uh, and its influence. Like any social movement, 4B has its own internal rifts and divisions. Can 4B women be friends with men, with women who still want to date men? Does lesbianism privatize relationships, destroy feminist solidarity, and resexualize women? Or is it necessary? Is it a necessary foundation for a world without men? Some 4B practitioners also were turned off. I'm telling you. Turned off by the movement's focus on cisgender women to the exclusion of trans women. Many of the online communities require verification with a photo ID, right? And then there's the other question. For a movement born of rage, what happens when the rage mellows and when other concerns take priority? And she talks about friends who forego makeup when they meet her, but don't want to give up their true, the power of their femininity or being conventionally attractive. They cannot let go of the power uh, of this power as woman and using femininity. There are feminists who say, oh, I'm feminist. I hate men, but I also want to be, you know, consumable. Her friends describe videos on YouTube as ex home women who told viewers that they'd seen the light and returned to heterosexuality. Narratives that recall the profusion of the hashtag tradwife content. And this is what I want to say about the whole 4B movement. And I, I say it again. It cannot survive without the support of women. And as long as women are willing to be out there and be these tread wives and, and display this, you know, happy experience and they, they have the word submissive in their mouths and they're like, I submit to my husband and, uh, you know, to be humble to your husband and I want to be taken care of and I want to be a traditional wife. This isn't going to work. This simply isn't going to work. Anyway, that's all I had to say for it. I'm sorry it took so long. I'm sorry I was kind of out of it. But I really just wanted to put my two cents into it and see where it goes and hear your comments on it. What do you think? Do you think the 4B movement is something that could work here in the West? And if so, how? Do you think it's sustainable? Could it be sustainable for 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, comment on the video, don't like the video, whatever you do, I appreciate. And until next time, you have a good night. Bye.